you. Boom! All night long. Yes. Let's freaking go! Your LSU Tigers survive and advance. That is the name of the game when it comes to the NCAA tournament. If you are an in results person and you only focus on the final score, guess what? It looks fine. LSU won by 10. And guess what? We'll take it at this point. This has been a very banged up team, as many of you know. But you can make a very strong argument that that was the worst game played by a Kim Mulkey team in any postseason. That was ugly. But guess what? When it comes to March Madness, sometimes you've got to be able to win ugly. And that is exactly what LSU did today. So, you know, the first thing that really stands out to me about this team is they really struggle to score easy baskets. Uh, you know, every shot seemed to be contested as the game moved on. They started getting better opportunities. And then on the opposite end, there were a lot of open shots for Rice that they were not able to make. The second thing the turnovers were a major issue. LSU averaged 15 turnovers per game on their end. And guess what? They had 24 total turnovers. As you can see on your screen, if you're listening to this via podcast form, 24 turnovers on um, you know a season where they've only not done that. Okay? And this box score kind of looks... Like most LSU box scores, you'll see that there's not one particularly high score, but you did have four players in double figures today, and one also had nine. So Flaje had 14, Angel Reese had 10, and Nisa Morrow was, to me, by far the best player you could tell. She was uh, the most motivated player, this being her first ever NCAA tournament game. She, uh, she had 15 points today. Michaela Williams had 14. Haley Van Lith had seven. Last year, Poa had nine. And I think the biggest concern, if you're worried about a long NCAA tournament run, is the minutes played, okay? LSU pretty much played the same five players for the entirety of this game. Flaje, 38 minutes. Angel Reese, 37 of 40 minutes. Anissa Morrow, 35 of 40 minutes. Michaela Williams, 34 of 40 minutes. So this game, uh, Rice isn't really that good of a team. They're 19 and 14 in a weaker conference. You could see once Rice lost their best player on a very questionable call, uh, Malia Fisher, they were lost after they lost uh, their point forward in Malia Fisher. So um, once she was out, uh, she had 13, one of the leading scores for this team. Uh, LSU was able to roll. Uh, but th th the bottom line is this team is not playing their best. Uh Obviously, you, you can make a case in the SEC tournament. They played well, but this was uh, a, a, a result. But LSU just did not play well at all today. Uh, they definitely won the free throw disparity. They had 31 free throws to Rice's eight. I thought LSU had the more uh, favorable whistle. Uh, and I thought the referees were terrible on, on both sides, Dan. Um, uh, but the bottom line is, man, the turnovers. I, I've never seen, um, you know, an, an elite team like LSU playing on their home floor two weeks to prepare. You can argue rustiness, uh, but rustiness should go by the wayside after the first or second quarter. This was a clunky game from start to finish. Uh, they did overall shoot fine from the free throw line, 71%. You'll take that any day of the week. But obviously, Angel Reese, she missed two big ones in the fourth quarter, and she was only one of seven from the field. So, 
you, you look at this team, they they're they're not playing well. Uh, th- this team is, is just kind of clunky, and that might end up biting them. But you do have some positives uh, to point to, okay? Uh, and and there are quite a few. Let's start with the big picture. You won, like we started this live stream. You won the game. That's all that matters in the NCAA tournament. Survive and advance. The second thing is something that happened in the first game. Middle Tennessee State pulled the upset over Louisville. Now, how big of an upset is that? I don't know. Middle Tennessee uh, won by two. I think they've won 20 games in a row. I, at at this point, I, I won't be shocked by anything uh, that could potentially happen to LSU in this postseason. So, um, obviously, last year's team was definitely better than this year's team. That doesn't mean LSU can't repeat. That doesn't mean LSU can't get it done. That doesn't mean LSU doesn't have better players than last year's team. I think they do. I think in terms of individual talent, they're definitely better. They're just not as deep. Uh, you know, you only have five players that are non-true freshmen that are part of your rotation. And, you know, for portions of this game, I thought Michaela Williams played really well today. Um, this is a player who's been very up and down uh, for LSU this season as a true freshman. That's what you expect uh, from most true freshmen. I thought she was really good today. I thought she made some really um, good decisions. But at the same time, she was up there with the turnovers. Uh, as well, Michaela Williams had five turnovers. Every single non-center player for LSU had at least two turnovers today. In fact, um, the only two players that had less than three that played at least 30 minutes or at least 20 minutes was Flaje and Morrow. So at this point, uh, I I would say Flaje and Morrow are playing really good. Angel Reese has not necessarily caught her stride yet. and Towards the end of this game, Haley Van Lith was painful, uh, to, to say the least. It, it was really tough to watch. I think she did some good things defensively. Um, one of their best players, number five, is a guard. I thought defensively she did a good job with their intensity uh, for good portions of the game. But uh, you could tell she didn't play her best today. So overall, just a nasty, nasty performance. And sometimes that's a good thing. That is a really good thing because guess what? The next game you're going to play better. Not there. There's rarely ever been an NCAA tournament champion that has played excellent in every single game that they played. UConn did last year uh, in the men's tournament. North Carolina did many years ago with uh, Ty Lawson and Tyler Hansborough. And there's also been some women's teams that have been able to do that. Um, you know, those Geno teams actually ran through teams pretty easily uh, during some of those Brianna Stewart years. But really, more often than not, championship teams, you have to get lucky. And LSU got some luck today that they don't have to play Louisville. Um, the, you know, they're the higher-seeded team. They would have been the more motivated team um, to, to play their old player. And I also think Louisville had a little bit of a look-ahead spot um, here. That was the biggest look-ahead spot of the century going up against someone that they probably do not like at all. Um, But the truth here is LSU lucky to advance today. You'll take the result and you move on to the next game. So type Y for yes, type in for no. Um, The rare Friday live stream. If you guys have any questions, I watch every second of this game. I, I missed a few plays at the end getting ready for the show here. Um, But other than that, if you have any questions, feel free uh, to ask them. And we'll wait for Kim Mulkey to get to the presser as well and get some of her comments. Uh, I believe it'll take a little bit longer for her to get to the press conference because she is probably going to light into this team uh, pretty well. Um, You know, once again, I am not uh, Pat Summit here, okay? I'm I'm not Bob Starkey. I'm not going to be able to – break down the Tex winner triangle offense here. But I will tell you two things that was very frustrating to watch. LSU 
acted like they had never seen a one three one zone before. Like they had never seen some of the defensive uh, schemes uh, that they saw uh, today, which I thought was very interesting. Uh, they they were not ready at all. It looked like Rice threw something at them that they had not necessarily planned for. And, you know, when you think about it, a 1-3-1 one, one, um, is actually a really good defense uh, to play versus LSU. What you have to do versus a 1-3-1 one, one is you really have got to move uh, the basketball quickly around that zone. If you get very stagnant, that defense is very, very good um, because it really puts pressure on all three levels um, of an offensive set, right? It can attack the middle perimeter. You have three people in the middle that can flex out. And then, of course, you got that one person down into the post. You know, one three ones are tough. Uh, th th they can be very tricky if you're not whipping the basketball around and playing quickly. And if you're playing sloppy, uh, it's going to lead to a lot of turnovers. And I don't think it was just that. Rice gave them a bunch of different looks. I was really impressed with their coaching staff. I also thought Rice did a good job generating some easy buckets. And look, if they had an extra player or two, they 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 might have been able to pull off the result today. So this is a good wake-up call. And I felt LSU offensively uh, could have moved the basketball a lot quicker. OK, and that is potentially because they don't have a regular point guard, right? Haley Van Lith, she is a two. OK, she's not a one. That's not what she does. Uh, she is more of a spot up shooter type of player. And last year, Poa is basically the only point guard we have, only true um, point guard that we have on this team. So I I, I am very worried. I, I really, really, really am. I thought SEC tournament, LSU played well. You blow out Auburn. Uh, you take care of business against a very good Ole Miss team. And you played valiantly versus a South Carolina team when you were undermanned. Uh, but it, it's it, it, today was, was, was bad. It was really, really, really bad. The good news. Once again, survive in advance. Louisville, um, of course, is out. And we should be favored pretty heavily uh, versus Middle Tennessee here in just a few days. Now, there's a lot going on in the world of LSU sports. And LSU, of course, has a basketball game uh, coming up on Sunday. We'll see. Uh, you know, Middle Tennessee, that's obviously great. There's a big baseball game tonight. We'll talk about that uh, some LSU versus Florida. These are the two best programs in the sport, if you ask me. You can argue uh, Arkansas, you can argue a lot of different baseball programs, but these are the two best. And uh, Florida will be in Alec Box Stadium. And then, of course, LSU football. Now, I do want to address something that has nothing to do with the actual basketball, which is what I focus on. In any sport, I care about the sport itself. But, you know, I, I say out of Sherry Barry, give me your full thoughts on it. Type Y for yes, type in for no. If you can hear me loud and clear. Um, I've been moving some stuff around. As you can see, I got um, new lighted background. I was able to make this really cool purple shade uh, today. So hope you enjoy that. I could see Sherry loves it. Um, I, I, I do want to address something that, that kind of went viral during the game. Okay. And I, I find it when the national media does this, it's so disgraceful. Okay. It really, really, really pisses me off. Um, and and I get why they do this. They had a um, th there was a national writer by the name of Pat Forty. I've met Pat uh, plenty of times at football games at the NBA draft uh, a decade ago. Um, I, I I don't know him well, but Pat Forty said, "Hey, I got word that there is a Washington Post story coming out with a bad light being painted on Kim Mulkey." And I don't know the details of the story. I've had quite a few of you text me and ask me if I know. I have a hunch. I have heard things. And, and you know, that's just not really my MO. I will let the journalists at the Washington Post come out with what they want to come out. But here, here's the truth with Kim Mulkey. And, and it goes back to the whole South Carolina debacle. 
when the media went absolutely berserk over Kim Mulkey doing the right thing, protecting her player, just making a very simple thing about Cardoso saying, hey, pick on someone your own size. You saw how people reacted. You 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 saw how people uh, just absolutely crapped all over uh, Kim Mulkey for doing something just not out of the line. She didn't boisterously say it. She wasn't angry when she said it. She just kind of said it matter of factly. It wasn't anything, but it was the power of the written word and it was how bad people hate Kim Mulkey. All right. I don't agree with everything Kim Mulkey says. I don't agree with a lot of her strategies. Uh, she is going to be really pissed off that she put out the product that she put out today. We did get the result. I'm sure she's happy with the result. She has won a lot of NCAA tournaments, winning a game or two there pretty ugly. But even with all that said, there is a vendetta against Mulkey for whatever reason, okay? Uh, and there are a lot of them. I totally get it. She is someone that does, that, that not everyone's going to like. But the idea that you're going, it's not even his story. He doesn't even work at the Washington Post. To release it during a game, it's not even your story. You know what the you're doing. I I just I, I I want to be in the national media so bad. I want to have a big platform. I want to do the Stephen A. Smith thing. I want to be on the panel shows. I freaking love it. Sports media is my favorite thing to do. And whether it's play by play writing, I it's my it's it's my passion. It's what I do. It's what I grow up grew up wanting to do, and I'm lucky to get to do it on YouTube. And I hope to get to a Pat Forty level. Where I have this massive reach one day. But if that requires me tweeting out buzzworthy kinds of things that have nothing to do with the product, which is a total disservice to the game itself, without any substance, and it's not even your news organization that's actually coming out with the story, so it 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 it's it's downright disgraceful it really 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 is and i i would love pat i would love to have pat 40 on here right now i would love for him to explain why he did that what what is the purpose of that so i'm interested to see what exactly the story has to say um and i will obviously judge kim fairly if there actually is anything truly nefarious in there. Let's go to Michael. He says, I don't mean any hate by this. Michael says, I hope LSU women's basketball can land a player with a similar play style to Caitlin Clark, because that's the only way for me to enjoy women's basketball. Otherwise, the lack of athleticism is too glaring. And Michael says, I support them nonetheless. Okay. I'll touch on this briefly, and feel free to throw your questions in there. Once again, if you super chat, uh, we'll send you something obviously pretty dope. I have some Kim Mulkey cards, so our first fifty dollar super chat, I will send you a Kim Mulkey uh, card. All right, twenty dollars super chat, I'll send you an autograph LSU football card. Um, I got Dwayne Bow over here. I got Jacob Hester over here. So uh, we will we'll talk about that. All right. So, Michael, I'll, I'll address it. So, first thing is LSU does actually have a player who plays just like Caitlin Clark, and her name is Michaela Williams. This is not Michaela Williams' team. More than likely, Michaela Williams will not be as good as Caitlin Clark. I don't know if we'll ever see anyone as good as Caitlin Clark. Obviously, Hildago at uh, Notre Dame and Juju Watkins at USC. Uh, they, 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 they definitely have a shot. But Michaela Williams plays a lot like Caitlin Clark, and she can fill it up like Caitlin Clark. She's just not at that level. Yet, and the way the team is structured, she shouldn't play like that. Because if you have an Issa Morrow and you have Flaje and you have um, Angel Reese, you 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 shouldn't you shouldn't play a Caitlin Clark type of style. Like obviously, if Caitlin Clark played in our team, we would be a better team, but it wouldn't be a necessarily great fit. If you get what I'm saying, right? Same thing with Haley Van Litt. It's not been the absolute perfect fit uh, for this team. She is a natural two, and we normally play with uh, a natural one that actually sets up the offense and, and so on and so on. Um, so, yeah, you know, Caitlin's great. 
transcendent. I shared this and it pissed a lot of LSU fans off. We should be very grateful for Caitlin Clark. She has helped our program. She has helped our spotlight. She has helped women's basketball. But she might be one of one. She might be, I mean, she might be like a Jordan type of thing. It might be a marriage type of thing where we never see someone like her again. It could happen. Um, but you gotta you gotta you know respect women's basketball for what it is. I don't personally neutrally like to watch women's basketball as much as I do men's basketball. It has grown. The I, I could definitely tell you this: my love for men's college basketball has gone down, and my love for women's basketball has gone up. It's been more of a meteoric rise for women's, and and has been my downward trend for men's college basketball. Uh, I and I, I'll touch on this, and this is the same thing for every live stream. And I even tweeted out a, a play that pissed me off. The refereeing is so bad; you can't really watch this game and not be frustrated with the officiating. I thought the fifth foul on their best player uh, was bad. I even tweeted about it. I can understand the referee saying that she swiped Anissa Morrow's legs out from under her. That's not what happened. I've looked at, I was a pruder filmed uh, the replay a gazillion times over. You have a right as a defender to stand where you're going to stand. If the offensive player goes in for the layup, and by their momentum, their legs get swiped under by clipping you, then that is on you, the offensive player. So even though that foul helped us, I hate it. I hate women's basketball officiating. It's bad. And I actually call women's college basketball games on a lower level. I also call men's basketball uh, on a lower level. I am very passionate about the game of basketball, as you could tell. And the women's game is officiated worse at that level, too. Okay? Um, so that needs to be fixed. And, look, I, I, I get it. Women's basketball is not for everyone. It's not my favorite sport. But it has grown. The skill level has gotten better. I will tell you, 10 years ago, I would rarely see anyone go behind their back, dribble behind their back in women's college basketball. Now every team has at least three players who do it regularly. And Flaw J is probably the best, um, along with Van Lith at doing just that. So the game has definitely evolved forward. Um, and I think that's a really, really good thing. Let's go to Rick, one of our many patrons. The refs called a very ticky-tack traveling calls, and Rice's big was parked in the lane all game. It was about damn time they called her on a three-second violation. Um yeah, she she was an issue. She was obviously a lot uh, to deal with in the post. Those types of, of thicker players have given us issues, right? So, you know, last year there was a player for Utah named Elisa Peely, and she's a little bit more of like a uh, – almost said Novak Djokovic. Ah, ah, ah. Nikola Jokic uh, type of uh, do-it-all stretch player. But – you know, if if you get in the women's game one of these thick post players, it's uh, it's a game changer. Like they can they can really cause damage in the paint. Um, and you saw that today. What was the player's name? Her name was, uh, I believe, her name was Sassy. Actually, uh, let me get this. Sussy N- Nagulafak. That's such a great name. Uh, she had ten points. Uh, today, but she only had three rebounds. So despite her being a really good post player, we dominated the boards. So there you go. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm very bullish on the women's game going forward overall. My final thoughts on that. Um, next thing, what does Kim Mulkey need to do to clean the turnovers up? A lot of it for me was, players doing the turnovers, right? It wasn't necessarily like an exotic play or anything like that. It was just sloppy. We we it was a lot of individual plays that caused us to basically throw the basketball um to uh the other team. We do need to revamp both our offense and our defense. Okay? We can't give up the easy ticky-tack stuff. 
we can't obviously uh, play at the level uh, that we play today because, you know, if we do, we uh, will get bounced in the Sweet 16. And at this point, uh, I know I got LSU stuff in my background. I, I have Angel Reese autograph memorabilia. I actually have a baseball sign by Angel Reese uh, sitting over here uh, somewhere. Uh, I have a tough time seeing this team make the Final Four. I really, really, really do. So we take a look at the poll question. 69, nice, percent of you say, yes, LSU will make it to the Final Four. I will say this. LSU does match up really well versus Iowa. We have the athletes to give Caitlin Clark issues. We have Flaw J. We have Anissa Morrow. Um, so now, even though it's been mostly negative and we have shared the big positive that we actually won, I want to go over a few positives. So first, Anissa Morrow. Oh, my goodness. Okay. She is so good. She is so incredible. And that is by far one of the best transfers we have ever landed in any sport, right? It is truly breathtaking. Like, she's not on, like, the Burrow, Paul Skeens level of transfers, uh, but she is probably in that next tier when it comes to recruiting and convincing her to join us. And she played so motivated. She was definitely the one, the most driven in today's game. And that happens if you've never gotten to play in an NCAA tournament game before. And we don't win the game today if we, if we did not have Moro's energy, leadership, and athleticism. She made some really tough shots in that first half. And I was kind of shocked she didn't score more uh, than just 15. But Moro, fantastic. Um, and you can make a case she's the best player on our team right now. Flaje, it is Redunculous how freaking good her bag has become when it comes to just an overall player. Last year during March Madness, she had some rough games. You put in the SEC tournament performance where she averaged over 20 per game. She had the very emotional uh, ending in the SEC tournament as well. And you also factor in today, she hit obviously a massive three uh, in that second half, she had that amazing, uh, I don't know what you call that play, the, it was a Euro step, uh, step over kind of play for an easy lay-in. She is truly breathtaking as an athlete and as an artist. So big thanks, big shout out to uh, Flaje. So those are two huge, and I mean huge bonuses uh, for us moving forward. Now, um, we are having a good time coming up after this, my early thoughts on middle Tennessee state P H L nation. Oh yeah, baby. You know about Louisiana controls. They've been showing us love throughout this college football season. And I'm looking for you to do the same when it comes to your energy management commercial HVAC needs. It is all with our buddies who have been doing this for over 40 years. Yes, that is four decades. You know this Louisiana weather gets crazy. Go to louisianacontrols.com or call 225-924-4990, baby. Let's go. All right, so the Blue Raiders, they've actually come to Baton Rouge before when it comes to football. Um, this is a really good basketball team. Um, they are hot. They're obviously playing at their peak right now. That is something that we aren't doing. And guess what? That's okay. We don't need to play our absolute best, uh, for us to win. We just don't. Um, but guess what? That's perfectly fine. We can find a way to do it. So all the... Small things. We have exactly 182 of you watching. Thank you guys so much. Please uh, drop a super chat, a super thanks. Um, 
Venmo Cash App is uh, attached if you want to get your question answered. Let's add it, Tyler. He was on the edge of his seat. Good to see you. Tony, it's Tiger, Cliff. Sassy Sussy was a Mack truck. Yeah, she she was she was pretty good. Um, there was definitely a few players where I was like, okay, is a transfer portal open yet? We would love to have them. Uh, the player that really impressed me was number one, Malia Fisher. And I looked her up, she's only a junior. So I'm already, I'm already portaling. Kim, sign me up. I will happily recruit, um, uh, some fresh faces to the roster. So there you go. Uh, Say hi to Tony. Let's go to Rick. The difference between men and women's basketball is men never get called for travel regardless, and women get called often. Yeah, there are a lot of travels. You wouldn't think traveling would be up for interpretation, but it honestly is. Like, in the NBA, it's never called. And they get away with it all the time. Men's, it's called some. Women's, a step and a half, you're getting you're getting whistled. Uh, there, there you go. Well, congrats, Michael, on graduating, man. There you go. We say hi to Mike. Twenty four turnovers is way too much. No final four with that. Yeah, I agree. It's 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 a little on on the heavy side. Uh, if you, if you ask me, but it's all good. It's all good. Um, I kind of want to touch on some football, but I kind of want to make this just women's basketball. So let's discuss Del Rosario. Obviously a tough game. Uh, some tough fouls. I thought, some of her fouls were actually legitimate. Uh, four fouls, no points, uh, a turnover. But defensively, she did have two steals. And God, we're gonna we're gonna need her to 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 really really step it up um, because there is a lot on Angel's plate right now. And if you remember, there's going to be a game where Angel Reese is going to get into foul trouble. A ref is going to make it a point to get her in foul trouble. And she's going to get in foul trouble. Um, we had Ladeja Williams as our backup post. We don't really have that this year, except Del Rosario is there. And, you know, Samaya Smith was actually supposed to be at she tore ACL. So uh, we, we, we need Del Rosario to step up big time. We really, really, really do. Let's see. All right. Here we go. We do have audio here. This is via WBRZ. Wait, hold on just a second. Let me see if I can. Fine. Yeah, we'll just we'll just we'll just roll with this. Okay. We got the Kim Mulkey here. And in the middle. Last year, Poa. We will start by asking questions for the players first, please. Uh, you please address the players by name so they know who you're talking to. And if you'll introduce yourself and your affiliation, since we are streaming this, we will bring a microphone to you. And then after the players are done, we'll dismiss them, let them back uh, go back to the locker room, and we'll have questions for Coach uh, Kim Mulkey. So with that, we'll open up the floor for questions for Michaela or last year. Uh, for Poa, um, Michael Cobble, WBRZ TV in Baton Rouge. How important was it for you to get out there and play, and how did you feel uh, with a good number of minutes today? Um, I was really nervous. I mean, obviously coming back from the injury, but I was really excited to play um, with the girls again and obviously getting the feel of the court with them again. Um, 
But yeah, it was good. Um, Michaela, I guess for you, it's a similar situation. You're working your way back, uh, even though you played in the SEC title game. Just what was it like, the pace, and then obviously playing in your first NCAA tournament game? Um, the pace was – it wasn't anything different. I mean, I um, came in expecting it because we've been playing like this all season. But um, I was excited. Obviously, this – well, we got a W, but it's not how we wanted to start um, March Madness off. But we can't do anything but go back to the drawing board and pick it up for the next round. in New Orleans uh, for both the players. It kind of felt like you guys finally got into a rhythm in the third quarter, 23 points, just kind of what led to that in that frame. Um, obviously, we had to pick up the pace. Um, obviously, you know, it was kind of, it was a sloppy game. And I felt like we were just out of rhythm at first, you know, missing shots. But those are the shots that we normally make and, you know, just happened to be one of those games. But obviously, in the third quarter, we picked it up and, yeah, we continued. Um, to piggyback off of um, Poa, um, I think I w we picked it up, yeah, but I think that's just us hitting shots. We still had a lot of turnovers and we still had a lot of sloppy possessions. We just happened to make shots at the right time. Uh, this is for last here. And uh, Michaela, uh, this is Blake Berdara from WNBA Swish. Uh, what do y'all, y'all had 24 turnovers. What do y'all think you got to do next game to correct that problem? Take care of the ball. I mean, that's that's really all it is to it. Take care of the ball and um, pay attention to the details. Take care of it. Look who you're throwing it to. Stop making careless turnovers. Yeah, I agree. Um, take care of the ball, but I feel like I'm just making the right plays at the right time and obviously being more patient um, and being more of a leader. Uh, yes, for both y'all. Question: Where she really kind of, I think she had four buckets in a row or something. Um, and the way they came out and eventually settled. I want to give credit to Rice. I'm just a coach that believes Rice was excited. Um, they have a new coach. Two of my former managers are their coaches. Um, proud of those guys. Um, I just thought there was a there was a feeling about us that maybe lack of urgency and thinking that you could get beat. Um, but at the end of the day, you have 24 turnovers. You're, you're going to, you're going to look bad and 24 turnovers. Um, it, it, it almost became comical because I thought, are they in a contest to see who has the most turnovers? Cause that's how many each of them had. Jerry Lee Willis Jr. The college sports report, coach. You mentioned you just mentioned one of the points of emphasis you carry on in practice all the time, not being not having an off day. And today, it wasn't so much an off day, but it was just that they were slow. Ugly basketball game. It was an ugly basketball game. It's okay. You won't hurt our feelings. <laughs> okay, it happens, but you won. Keep perspective. You won. You survived, and you're going to advance. Um, if I remember last year against Miami in the Elite Eight, that was an ugly basketball game, and I told the audience I'd turn my TV off. I wouldn't watch this. It was ugly today. Uh, to emphasize the good things, uh, we did hold them to 30, below 39.9 from the field. You're going to win games when you do that. Uh, we didn't shoot it bad with the exception of a couple of players. I thought the other players had good shooting percentages in the shots that they took. Uh, I thought we got to the foul line like we have all year. Um, we put them at the foul line, if I remember, right about the eight-minute mark of the fourth quarter. That's bad. That's bad defense right there. And we're not, we were not very disciplined in that fourth quarter. Uh, I thought our crowd was outstanding. Um, very, very good crowd today for a 3 o'clock game on a Friday. But we don't work in Louisiana. Fridays are our first, that's the first day we get to party. The weekend, baby. Uh, Matthew Bruni with on three. Uh, just Michaela and Flage, um, especially Michaela coming back uh, from the injury. Just uh, what, how did you evaluate them off offensively and how they were able to uh, get, their, get their shots? 
Well, they both shot it pretty good. I think Michaela was five for 10, Flage was five for nine. Um, that's a freshman and a sophomore. And I thought they did just fine shooting the ball. Um, Cause they're just the turnovers. I mean, 24 turnovers, that's, that's bad. And I, I'd like to give Rice some credit for their one, three, one half court defense may have created a maybe half of those, but a lot of those turnovers were just us. A lot of them were just unforced. Scott Rappelet with the advocate. Kim, would you uh, talk about the, you know, playing POA, you know, the, the, how you've planned to play her today? Did you think you'd get that many minutes out yeah. of her? Yeah. Uh, and, and how did you think she looked? I thought she did fine. I thought she frustrated me at times, just like Haley did. Those are your two primary ball handlers. What did they frustrate me with? Turnovers. So it was flipping a coin, which one was not going to turn it over. Um, and so, but I'm, I'm grateful that Poa is healthy. I'm grateful that she's back and uh, we're a better basketball team. We have more depth with Poa and um, she's, I'm, she's not under any constraints as far as playing time or anything like that. Bryce Coon with 24-7 Sports. Coach, it was kind of mentioned earlier to the players, but just your kind of uh, kind of initial reaction to, obviously, Anissa as a tone setter. I mean, I know you've seen this all year out of her, but especially in that third quarter, felt like she could really kind of set the tone, and both players mentioned we follow when, when she kind of gets rolling. Anissa is um, – her motor never stops. Um, she's just she, – she has the same – pace the entire game and that pace is just really good and um, she's just been um, an outstanding player for us undersized post player um, probably don't use her enough on shooting the three ball because of our offense but uh, she battles in there for rebounds and um, she's she's I'm just grateful I get to coach her and she's on our team in my first question, you kind of had a, a statement that maybe they didn't feel like they could be beat. Was, did you like that this was a bit of a reality check or a test for them? I like that we won. I mean, I, I don't – I'm not going to sit here and critique everything we did bad. What good is that going to do? Uh, there are a lot of teams that got beat today that weren't supposed to get beat. We won. And uh, we advanced to play an outstanding middle Tennessee uh, – team and program. I have much respect for Coach Insel and the job he's done and um, have a former All-American player of mine on that staff. So I'm getting old. Uh, this is Blake Spadaro from WMBA Swish. Uh, how do, what do you think of Angel's leadership abilities despite her having an off shooting game? Angel got 19 rebounds. She didn't shut it down. She got seven shot attempts. So it's not the Angel Reese show with us. We got other people that can score. She brings a great deal of um, attention to us, and we're so glad. She's an All-American, but everybody's entitled to a bad game. She's entitled to one, and her teammates picked it up for her. Freshman, you know, scored points. Poa came in from being hurt. Just, you just help a teammate. You just battle through. But the only time a coach or the only time I would get upset with somebody that has a bad um, night is if you just quit on us. You don't give us something. Well, she, I think, almost had 20 rebounds. So she was trying. One more question for Coach right back here. Coach, you mentioned earlier not wanting to really dwell on all the bad things. It doesn't do a lot of good. What do the next 24 hours look like for you all in terms of kind of moving on from this and kind of prepping for Middle Tennessee? Well, we're going to have dinner tonight. We're going to recruit tonight. Uh, we're going to watch film tonight. We're going to get in bed late tonight. We will sleep in a little tomorrow. We'll come and watch film as a group tomorrow. Um, come meet with you guys again tomorrow. I can't wait. Um, and get back on the floor, very limited minutes, because they played a hard game today. So, do we know what time we play Sunday? Anybody? Not yet. Won't know till late tonight. Won't know till late tonight. 
Is that before my bedtime or after my? Sounds bedtime? like you're going to be up late, so we, we might probably we might before. Because <laughs> television dictates everything, right? Why are you looking right? At me? Why are you looking at me? Huh? <laughs> Some whiskey. You like whiskey? You knew. Where are you from? You haven't been in my press conferences, so where are you from? Mandeville, St. Tammany Parish. They got a lot of whiskey and good boil crabs in St. Tammany. Come back. Don't make this your first and last trip here, okay? Good, good. Coach, thanks for your time. Congratulations. You bet, we baby. appreciate it. You bet. We'll be back here in just a couple of minutes. We'll hear from Rice's head coach in a couple of So there you go. All right. Well, I'm about to have to skid at. And I hate to do it with so many people in here, but that's life. If you super chat, we'll keep it going for a little bit. I um, have a little family powwow. Um, we are getting into today. So if you got a question, go ahead and get it in. I I, I kind of like that it's only a women's basketball show. I, I think that's so cool that the game has uh, grown uh, to that level. Not really a whole lot on the football front. Um I thought it was really cool that Patrick Peterson uh, was on campus. I thought it was also cool DJ Chark uh, was on campus. I also think LSU baseball playing Florida is a really big freaking deal. Knowing the history of the two programs, how wild it is that they've met in College World Series finals twice. The the odds of that happening is so small. Um so there you go. We see Pegasus in here. I really appreciate that. Uh, keep me up to date on the softball game, uh, Tony. We're actually uh, – really all the softball diehards are in our PHL Discord. That is linked down below, the Power Hour LSU Discord. So there you go. Um, I'll take it. Ha, 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 ha. I will take it. Want to give big thanks uh, – Design Imaging, uh, everyone that uh, supports us, I really, really, really do appreciate it. We will be live after the game on Sunday. Like Kim Mulkey said, we don't know what time the game is on Sunday. Obviously, ESPN finagles uh, those games to make sure they can get the absolute highest number. Um, and I totally get that as well. I would guess the game on Sunday will be in the two-ish region. That's normally a pretty good time. Um, for a women's college basketball game. And ESPN uses their historical data to formulate the best ratings. Obviously, LSU, outside of Caitlin Clark, draws the biggest number. So um, I would expect the game, my best educated guess, will be 2 p.m. Sunday. Okay, 2 p.m. So there you go. Florida loses in men's basketball. That's always a reason to celebrate. And they're going to lose again tonight. They're going to lose again tonight. And guess what? They're not going to lose again in baseball tonight. They're going to lose again in baseball tomorrow. Let's go, Strobe Show. Let's go. Yes. Party when the Gators lose. Just like we had yesterday when Kentucky lost. My goodness gracious. Nothing gets my heart in a better place than when the Gators lose. And then when Coach Cal lose, I have nothing against Kentucky. Everyone thinks I hate Mark Stoops for all I wrote about him and and and, and have written about him on the SEC channel I do. Um, but that's not here nor there. It is a party when Florida loses. Don't give me that SEC BS. There are some SEC programs that I do not like more than others, in case you couldn't tell. Ooh, Auburn's about to lose. I had them in my final four. I had I had them beating oh man. I'm so cooked. I am so unfreaking believably cooked. Oh man, I've got to watch the end of this. Does anyone else have the Auburn game pulled up? 
Oh, man. Did Auburn? Okay, they got they got the ball here. Oh, okay, so they get two free throws here. Is it time to go? Right here. All right, we I've got to skedaddle. Uh, we're, we were going to enjoy this experience together, but that is not going to happen. My parents are here. My in-laws are actually here. Oh, my God, Auburn. Why Why would I trust Auburn? I had Auburn beating UConn. Why would I do such a thing? You never trust Auburn. Cam Newton is not walking through that door. Oh, they got their own rebound. There's no way. Yale wins. Oh, man, Auburn. You, please, Auburn, go drink bleach. Go drink bleach, Auburn. Please. All right, y'all. I'm out. Kim Mulkey going back to back. Let's go. Huh? 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 It is. Power. Power. LSU, boom! And tonight, we are doing, oh, the bacon wrap jalapeno poppers with cream cheese mixed in there. Let's go.